There we go, half gallon of milk does a man some good. Okay, we're here somewhere in the Poconos to turn this typical waste product into something very useful. Trash to treasure. Let's start the pursuit. Hello, Pat. Thanks Hi. very much for inviting me. You're welcome, Paul. Now, you've promised to turn this into something very useful. Oh yes, bring your milk jug this way. We take plastic that is used and we give it a second life. All right. We now, take things like milk jugs. Soda bottles and soda, things like that? Well, we don't use soda bottles, but um, we do use things like oil used oil containers. Uh -huh. So these two, even though they have different applications... And that's the symbol on the bottom, the number two? Yes, the recycle symbol is the same. It's the same polymer, same gotcha. plastic. Now, I see you've got oil containers. Now, do you have to wash all that oil out or just drain it as well, much as you can? Well, we, we drain the oil out and we get what we would say would be about 99.9% .9 of the oil out. Yeah. And the little bit of remnant that's in there does not seem to bother our operation or our product. Okay, let's go to step one. We've got the plastic. What do we do next? Now we need to grind up the plastic. Fred's grinding up milk jugs and you can give him your milk jug and we'll turn that into a useful product. All right. Fred, here's my jug. You look after that, okay? Here it goes. So the milk jugs get ground up and then we have a blower that sucks them out of the grinder and sends them to a separator. The material that comes down the bottom comes through a, a conveyor into a, a bucket or container or drum that we store the material in temporarily. Excellent. So I should be able to get my little milk jug there You're going to get pieces. your milk jug in little pieces. Excellent. Let's go and have a look at it. Oh, remains indeed. So, stage one is complete. They're like little soap flakes, aren't they? Yes, they are. All right, what happens next? Then we take the ground up milk jug and we put it through another process to make a useful product out of it. Uh -huh. But you're going to need safety glasses over here. Absolutely. We're in the uh, heart of the industrial process here, yeah? Yes. Okay, so this looks like a drum full of kind of ground up milk jugs. Yes, it is. You can put your milk jug, your ground up milk jug right into our... All right. I'm going to say goodbye to my little alas for milk jug. And there she goes. So take us through the process now. This is a raw material that feeds a machine. And this is being... The material is, is vacuum conveyed up to hoppers up on top, and then okay. it gets blended with some color concentrate and ultraviolet stabilizers, and gravity fed down through these hoppers okay. into the feed throat of the extrusion part of this machine. This machine is melting that plastic at 475 degrees Fahrenheit. As the plastic is melted, it's pushed forward under pressure into these blocks and then it's diverted back underneath here to a, what we call a shot pot. So that's a holding chamber and this looks like a mega hydraulic piston. This is a, a large hydraulic piston that develops 300 tons of pressure so that we that's can... That's a lot of pressure, isn't it? I it is. Yeah. And we need to have that much pressure because we need to move this very viscous material into the mold very quickly. And now the plastic, which was soft like honey, uh -huh. is now going to become hard and rigid, and it'll be a new shape. Go oh, on, here is my jug. <laughs> wow. Don't touch it. It's Don't hot. touch it. So, oh, I can feel it, yeah. And what we well, have... Well, here is your milk jug as a fence post. Excellent. And so, lo and behold, we have the finished product. Somewhere here, Pat, is my milk jug. Yes, your milk jug is in the post, and we have assembled here two posts and three rails. And, of course, and if you haven't guessed it already, it's a post three and rail, rail fence. Yeah, absolutely, and very, very lucky. It's got a wonderful kind of wood finish on it. Now, that's the advantage here. This product has, has been designed to make it look like it's made from real trees, with the bark still on it quite strong, isn't it? It is. Go ahead and pull yourself up on that. Strong ball. and flexible? It's, it's flexible, but it'll hold your weight. It will. Oh, look at that. And that's 175 pounds of... Uh, <laughs> let's not go any further on that one. <laughs> so, in terms of lifespan, it's going to be better than wood, I suppose? Oh, well, it doesn't rot. That's the main thing. So, if uh, it'll, it'll outlast a, a wooden fence by many, many years.
So I have to say, I'm very impressed. You, uh, Pat's been telling us a little bit about the factory. A lot of the equipment you've recycled from other companies. All the equipment that we use here virtually has been recycled from other companies that were going to get rid of it. Some of it came from junkyards, and we've put it all back into condition. So we've recycled the machinery, and now we're recycling the plastic. Excellent.